What's up, GarageBand users? Today we're going to be taking a quick look at some of the more advanced editing options inside of GarageBand 10, and I'm also going to be discussing ways to ensure that you are using GarageBand in the most efficient manner so that you can avoid things like latency and choppy playback while tracking and or mixing. Either way, it's going to be a super fun video, so I'm Lewin, your host. Welcome to GarageBand and Beyond. Let's get right to it. The first thing we're going to discuss is how to get more precise moves out of these automation points. This is probably something you've seen a lot where you move them up and down and the numbers jump a lot more than you want them to. Simple solution. Drop a different point, select both of them at the same time, and then move those two, and watch this, you get much smaller increments. You get that one-tenth of a decibel move. Um, it's a really easy thing to do. Just drop that second point in there and get more precise moves. While we're talking about volume changes inside of the automation area, check this out. You can grab any of these lines, click on it, and you can move it up and down, right or left. Basically, any of these lines that you see, you can move these. And it's a nice, easy way to move large sections of volume up and down without actually clicking on the individual automation points themselves. Moving on from automation, now let's talk about efficiency. One of the things that will slow your computer down the most is leaving these monitors on. So just make sure you have them off. If you don't know, you can click, hold the mouse, and swipe down and turn them off all at once. Just get to the bottom here and unclick and you're done. Here's something I'd like to suggest to anybody who's using lots of tracks that all require the same reverb, like backup vocals or lots of guitars. Use these master output effects. This is the master echo. Um, you know, just like any other delay, you have all the different options. Uh, when you click here, you can, you know, so you have the options to tailor the sound as you want it. The controls are very simple, you know, um, and here's the reverb. I really like these reverbs for backup vocals specifically, especially lots of them. You get lots of nice reverb choices, and the controls themselves are just easy to use and understand. Really good practice. So if you're curious where they are, we'll just go back to the track, open the plugins, and it is these faders right here, these little sliders here. Those are the ones that we have now, you know, programmed to be what we want them to be. Super easy thing, really efficient. Next up on the efficiency list is making sure that all of the plugins in the output section of your master track are turned off. Um, really easy thing to do, click them off. If any of them are particularly heavy, in my case, it's the Slate Digital Virtual Tape Machine, I just go ahead, say no plug-in, and just turn that all the way off. And this way, it's just another step you can do to make sure that you don't have latency or bog down playback. Last thing on the list is probably one of my favorite things to show people here. Uh, easy way to copy and paste. You click on it, hold down the option key, and then You'll see that green plus and you can slide it over, hold the option key down, release the mouse while you're holding the option key and you get another one. And you can just copy and paste all day. Um, it's a much easier, more efficient way to do that and super easy. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, you know, I really appreciate your patronage over on my Patreon page and please subscribe to the channel and check out all my other videos. I make tons of videos and uh, I want you to watch all of them all. All right, have a great day, you guys. Peace.